A very good evening to our respected SRC sir and my team member. Today, I, Oshi Mazumdar and Odhiraj Shah of CSE 8 year is going to deliver a PowerPoint presentation on the topic Shift Reduce Parsing, which falls under the subject Compiler Design. Today's date is 14th February 2021. The first part of the PowerPoint will be explained by me and the second part, that is the question I have part, at the end will be explained by my team member Odhiraj Shah. Thus, I would like to start my PowerPoint from the next slide, which is about the parser. So basically, our topic is shift reduce parsing, which is a type of a parser. And thus, it is very important to know what a parser is. A parser is a compiler that is used to break the data into smaller elements coming from lexical analysis phase. A parser takes input in the form of sequence of tokens and produces output in the form of a parse tree. So basically, we get to know that parser is nothing but a compiler which takes an input as a form of tokens and it gives parse tree as its output. Parsing is of two types, top-down parsing and bottom-up parsing, which is shown in the figure below on the slide. Now, I would like to go to the next slide which is about the top-down parsing. Top-down parsing is also known as recursive parsing or predictive parsing. The process of constructing the parse tree, which starts from the root and goes down to the leaf, is top-down parsing. Top-down parsers construct from the grammar, which is free from ambiguity and left recursion. It uses leftmost derivation to construct a parse tree. It allows a grammar which is free from left factoring. In top-down parsing, the parsing starts from the start symbol and transforms into the input symbol. In the adjoining figure given on the slide, you can see the parse tree representation of an input string ACDB, which is as follows. The root node extends A, T, and B nodes, and the R and D node is extended by root node T. And there is the last node C, which is getting extended by the node R. Now, I would like to go to the next slide, which is about the bottom-up parsing. Bottom-up parsing is also known as shift-reduce parsing. Bottom-up parsing is used to construct a parse tree for an input string. In the bottom-up parsing, the parsing starts with the input symbol and constructs the parse tree up to the start symbol by tracing out the rightmost derivations of a string in reverse. There is an example given of, a of an input string id cross id, which is as follows. In the left hand side, you can see certain grammar rules in five different points, and there are six steps to make the uh, parse tree uh, by using the bottom of parsing rules. The last step six shows the ultimate tree or the output. Now, I would like to go to the next slide which is about the classifications of the bottom-up parsing. These are as follows. The first is shift reduce parsing and the second is operator precedence parsing. And there are certain varieties of LR parsing which includes LR0, LR1, SLR1, CLR1 and LALR1. These are basically not different type of LR parsing but they have different set of rules to uh, construct the tables of different LRs or SLRs and CLRs or LALRs. Now, I would like to go to the next slide, which is about shift reduce parsing. Shift reduce parsing is a process of reducing a string to the start symbol of a gra grammar. Shift reduce parsing uses a stack to hold the grammar and an input tape to hold the string. It performs two actions, shift and reduce. Thus, it is known as shift reduce parsing. At the shift action, the current symbol in the input string is pushed to a stack. At each reduction, the symbols will be replaced by the non-terminals. The symbols in the right side of the production and non-terminal is the left side of the production. In the adjoining figure, you can see a string getting reduced to the starting symbol, which is the basic operation of the shift reduce passing. There are two main categories of shift reduce passing, which are as follows. Operator precedence passing and LR passing. Operator precedence parsing uh, is basically a parse tree which generates form 
given grammar and string but the only condition is two consecutive non terminals and epsilon never appear in the right hand side of any production whereas in lr parsing it is the bottom up parser which generates the parse tree for the given string by using unambiguous grammar it follows the reverse of rightmost derivation now i would like to go to the next slide which explains all the basic operations of shift reduce parser the basic operation includes four operations shift reduce accept error the first one shift this involves moving of symbols from input buffer onto the stack second point reduce if the handle appears on the top of the stack then its reduction by using appropriate production rule is done that is the right hand side of the production rule is popped out of the stack and the left hand side of the production rule is pushed onto the stack the third point accept if only start symbol is present in the stack and the input buffer is empty then the parsing action is called accept when accept action is done or is obtained it means successful parsing is done and the last operation is error it is the situation in which the parser can neither perform shift action nor reduce action and also not even accept accept action in the next slide there is an example given which includes four context free grammar rules and an input string ai a1 minus in bracket a2 plus a3 and there is a parsing table in the right hand side of the slide which includes three columns that is stack contains input string actions so in in this uh, table we can see the various actions being performed on the input string and the pushing and popping out of the various elements by the functions or the operations which i mentioned in the previous slide that is shift reduce accept and in case if there is a error the error will also be get performed but in this case we are getting the shift reduce and the accept at the end where only dollar sign is left in the input string now i would like to go to the next slide which is about the lr parsers lr parser is the most popular type of bottom up parsing the lr parser scans the input from left to right which is the actual abbreviation of l in the lr parser however the r in the lr parser constructs the rightmost derivation in the reverse order the lr parser uses the look ahead input symbol which is represented by k in lr k parser the look ahead helps in making parsing decisions now i would like to explain the lr parser algorithm in this slide we can see two different uh, figures where the lr parser algorithm uses input stack the lr parsing program the function action and go to and the output is being shown the driver program here is not different from for, for all lr parsers only the parsing table is different from one parser to another parser the stack stores the chronology of the grammar with a dollar at the bottom of the stack the string which has to be parsed stays in the input buffer which is used to indicate the end of the input followed by a dollar symbol now i would like to go to the next slide which is about lr0 parser an lr0 item is a production g with a dot at some position on the right side of the production lr0 items is useful to indicate that how much of the input has been scanned up to a given point in the process of parsing in lr0 we place the reduce node in the entire row now the steps of making a lr0 table first point if a state is going to some other state on a terminal then it corresponds to a shift move second if a state is going to some other state on a variable then it corresponds to go to move third point if a state contain the final item in the particular row then write the reduce node completely now i would go to the next slide which is about sl slr1 parsing as i said slr1 refers to simple lr parsing it is same as lr0 parsing but the only difference is in the parsing table to construct slr parsing table we use 
canonical collection of LR0 items. In the SLR1 parsing, we place the reduced move only in the follow of the left hand side. Now, the various steps involved in the SLR1 parsing. Basically, we are given the input string and the context free grammars and we draw the data flow diagram. So, I would explain now the tables to, uh, the, uh, of SLR1 and how to construct them. First point, if a state of ii is going to some other state ij on a terminal, then it corresponds to a shift move in the action part. Second point, if a state ii is going to some other state, ij on a variable then it corresponds to a go to move in the go to part which is shown in the first figure, uh, figure in the left hand side and the last point if a state ii contains the final item like a extends to a b star which has no transitions to the next state then the production is known as reduced production for all terminals x in the follow a write the reduce entry along with the production numbers and thus we can make the SLR1 parsing table. Now I would like to go to the next slide which is about CLR1 parsing. CLR refers to canonical look ahead. CLR parsing use the canonical collection of LR1 items to build the CLR1 parsing table. CLR1 parsing table produces the more number of states as compared to the SLR1 parsing. In the CLR1, we place the reduce node only in the look ahead symbols. Now, the various steps involved in the CLR1 parsing. First, our input string is given and we have to write the context free grammar. Then we have to check the ambiguity of the grammars and add augment production in the given grammar. Then we have to create a canonical collection of LR0 items and draw the data flow diagram. After that, we have to construct the CLR1 table. First point, LR1 items. Second, LR1 item is a basically a collection of LR0 items and a look ahead symbol. LR1 item equals to LR0 item plus look ahead. And this is the representation of the previous point I explained. The next point, the look ahead is used to determine that where we place the final item. The look ahead always add dollar symbol for the argument production. Now I would like to go to the next slide which is about LALR1 parsing. LALR refers to the look ahead LR. To construct a LALR1 parsing table, we use a canonical collection of the LR1 items. In the LALR1 parsing, the LR1 items which have same productions but different look ahead are combined to form a single set of items. LALR1 parsing is same as the CLR1 parsing but the only difference here also is about the parsing table. There are some important points to note that even though the CLR parser does not have RR conflict but LALR may contain RR conflict. The next point to remember is that if the number of states of LR0 is N1 and the number of states of SLR is N2, the number of states of LALR is N3, then the number of states of CLR is N4, then we get that N1 is equal to N2 is equal to N3 which is less than equal to N4. That is the number of states of LR0, SLR, LALR are same or can be less than or equal to the number of states of CLR. Now, I would like to hand over the presentation, the last part, that is the questionnaire part of our presentation to Odhira Shah. Thank you, Aishi. Here, question answer segment. Now, the first question is, which of the following statements are true? Of first option, SLR parser is more powerful than LALR option. Second option, LALR parser is more powerful than canonical LR parser. Third option, canonical LR parser is more powerful than LALR parser. And the last option is the parser's SLR, canonical LR and LALR have the same power. This question came up gate 1998. And the correct option is option c because canonical lr parser is the strongest of all the parsing techniques available now the next question is an lalr1 parser for for a grammar g can have reduced conflicts if and only if. 
first option is the SLR one parser for G has SR conflicts. Second option is the LR one parser for G has SR conflicts. Third option is the LR zero parser for G has SR conflicts. And the last option is the LR LLR one parser for G has reduce reduce conflicts. This question came up get CSC 2008 and correct option is option B. The LR1 parser for G has SR conflicts because both LR1 and LR1 parser uses LR1 set of items to from their parsing tables and LR1 states can be find by merging LR1 states of LR1 parser that have the same state same set of past components of the of their items that is why if lr1 parser has two states i and j with items a goes to a dot b p comma x and a goes to a dot b p comma y respectively where a x, where x and y look ahead symbols then as these items are same with respect to their first component they can be merged together and from one single state let's say k here we have to take union of look ahead symbols after merging state k will have one single item as a goes to a dot bp comma x comma y now sr conflict in lr1 items can be there whenever a state has items of the, of the from a goes to a dot small b capital b comma p and c goes to d dot small b that is why it is getting both shift and reduce at symbol b hence a conflict now as lr1 parser have items similar to lr1 in terms of their first component shift reduce from will only take place if it is already there in is lr1 states if there is no SR conflict in LR1 state, it will never be reflected in the LALR1 state, often by combining LR1 states. The, now, the next question is question number three which of the following statements is false? And the first option is an unambiguous grammar has same leftmost and rightmost derivation. Next option, an LL1 parser is, is a top down person, and the next option LLR is, a, is more powerful than SLR. And the last option is an ambiguous grammar can never be LRK for any K. This question is came, this question came up get 2001, and the correct option is option A. And uh, an unambiguous grammar has same leftmost and rightmost derivation. Because unambiguous grammar can never have same leftmost and rightmost derivation because of its ambiguity. Now the next question is: Which of the following suffices to convert an arbitrary CFG to an LL1 grammar? Option A: Removing left recursion alone. Option B: Factoring the grammar alone. Option C: Removing left recursion and factoring the grammar. And option D, none of these. This question came up get 2003. And the correct option is option D, none of these. Because removing left recursion and factoring the grammar do not suffice to convert an arbitrary CFG to LL1 grammar. That is why all of the above options are wrong. Now the next question is. In a bottom in a bottom up evaluation of a syntax directed definition, inherited attributes can option A always be evaluated, option B be evaluated only if the definition uh, definition is L attributed, option C be evaluated only if the definition has synthesized attrib attributes, and option D never be evaluated. This question came up get 2003. And correct option is option B because a syntax directed a syntax directed definition is called is attributed. 
if it has only synthesized attribute l attributed definitions can con can um, definitions contain both synthesized and inherited attributes but do not need a build a uh, dependency graph to evaluate them that is why the correct option is option b and then next question is the grammar look at look at what is uh, what is there is not suitable for predictive parsing because the grammar is option a ambiguous option b left recursive option c right recursive and option d an operator grammar and the correct option is option a ambiguous and this question came up gate 2005 for predictive parsing grammar should be first point free of ambiguity next point free of free from uh, free from left recursion and the third point is free from left factoring given grammar contains both ambiguity and left factoring so it cannot be cannot have a predictive parser and the last question is among slr canonical lr and lar which of the following pairs identify the method that is very easy to implement and the method that is most powerful in that order and the first option is slr la and lar Second option is canonical LR and LALR. Third option is SLR and canonical LR. And last option is LALR and canonical LR. This question came up get CSE 2015 set 3. And the correct option is option C SLR and canonical LR. Because SLR parser is a type of LR parser with, with small parse tables. And, and a relatively simple parser generator algorithms and canonical parser canonical LR parser or LR1 parser is an LRK parser for K is equal to 1 that is why with a single look at a terminal it, it can handle all deterministic context free languages and LA, LA LR parser or look at LR parser is a simplified version of a canonical LR parser Uh, excellent presentation, I must say. Uh, uh, one comment that uh, uh, Samar Weishi has mentioned that uh, it has to be checked whether the grammar is ambiguous or not. First, I must tell that in context free grammar, even if it's a deterministic context free grammar, whether the grammar is ambiguous or unambiguous, that particular algorithm is unsolvable. Uh, so, that is not very easy. So, given a grammar, whether it's an, an, unambiguous or ambiguous, uh, that is difficult. That is not difficult. It is uh, it is proven that it is unsolvable. Uh, but that is it is not in your syllabus to explain it. But you have to know it. But in uh, uh, this is grammar, regular grammar, uh, that is provable. That is point number one. And point number two is uh, in the even both case in top down parsing case or bottom up parsing case, uh, the even the grammar is unambiguous uh, then it is very difficult okay first of all parsing tables will become uh, different entries so that is a sure short way if in your ll1 parsing table if you, is a parsing table has everybody has unique entry that is a good point that is a definitely ll1 parsing so th that you have several points you have said that even if you've taken out the left recursion even if you've taken out the left factory that is not 100% proof that it will be LL1 grammar. But whenever you go for LL1 parsing table, if the every row, every cell of the entry is a unique entry, that is 100% proof that it is a LL1 grammar. But LL1 grammar have certain restriction that is cannot have left recursion and uh, this, this, this. The LR1 is the other extreme that is one of the best, best grammar. Uh, only negative point is parsing table is huge, but one very good point of LR1, LR1 is more powerful because left recursion is allowed, uh, all these things. And another thing is, whenever there is an error, the LR1 parser gives, uh, uh, will come out with, uh, at the fastest way. Even uh, the, that is what I have to say that LR1 gives the, when the parser gives an error, 
at which point of line where is the error uh, it will come lr1 is much more faster and more helpful for the programmer first of all if the error is comes uh, compiler should not jump out of the thing because there is some compiler that it will go on doing the uh, compilation process not only single error it should come out it try to correct it there are some algorithms good compiler they fight to the second error so that uh, it will give back the uh, it try to correct it say if it's a missing semicolon they try to correct it with a missing semicolon or missing br uh, braces uh, that's great thing that is error handling that is error handling there is a panic mode re recovery phase mode recovery so lr1 is the best okay and another uh, confusion is there uh, that is not intentional that is whenever in shift reduce parcel uh, the top bottom point is dollar whenever you start if the bottom is dollar then you put either you took the input uh, a terminal and then the you see it whether it can be reduced or not the handle will be all to the top but in the lr0 whenever you for canonical set correction and all this thing then the bottom point should not be dollar Oishi has mentioned, but I think that is overlook. The bottom would be, um, the bottom would be, uh, yeah, dollar should be there. Dollar then is zero. Okay, so there's a two point. Uh, so because the state will be always they push it into the pairs, uh, the dollar with n is zero, and end will be uh, uh, s one. That s and upper on s one. So actually, we'll see it in the LR0, LLR, SLR, uh, the parsing, actually that terminal or variable need not to be into the stack, actually the state information should go. So initially it can be S0, S0 means the stack is empty. So in the shift reduce parser you have the dollar and in LR0 if I first recommend the dollar and then S0 and then we will see S0 have enough information that the beneath point is dollar. So why put dollar into it so better dollar you know, we are putting into s0 so that's it so it will be always like this it will be pushed in pairs and later we can see in some of the documentation in ahos book uh, they mentioned uh, the the variable or terminal and along with the state actually state captures all the information beneath the stack that is the concept of the state and in some other documentation they only say the state but that is not wrong, whatever you have mentioned. I think Oishi mentioned only state only. And so that's it. So excellent presentation. Uh, another thing, uh, this is the how to calculate the parsing table. That is really tough uh, because there you need uh, various programs is there, Yak, Bison are there. Um, but it's a good presentation, very good. Uh, that's uh, that's great. It is ambiguous or unambiguous, very difficult. No, so uh, profit algorithm that is number point one and uh, shift reduce parsing. Uh, you don't have state information for this LR zero, but you have to give the LR zero. LR zero is like a uh, like a Gandhari sort of thing. It cannot look ahead, but whenever you look ahead, uh, LR one is immensely powerful. LR one grammar is much more powerful. It it can solve many problems, but one point Udhiraj had mentioned sometimes SLR is simple LR. Don't say, I think you have mentioned uh, instead of small. No, small table true. It has a parsing table is smaller than LR1, but it is better you should mention that SLR is simple LR and LLR is look ahead LR and LR1 or canonical LR is.